Well, hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, and today I'm gonna to show you how to make some rainbow pandas, because they don't always have to be black and white. These cute little new pandas are gonna be colored in these very pastel colors, because it's spring, and I thought it would be fun to do these as little rainbow pandas. You can do this kind of a thing with a lot of different animals or different types of images. Just use rainbow colors, but do it in a deliberate enough way that it looks like it's whimsical rather than looking like you just forgot what color that animal is. So here, if I make all the pandas in different rainbow colors, it looks like I'm deliberately making a choice to do rainbow pandas. The one in the front here is going to be very much in the front and I want to push the others to the back and let them be softer. So I'm going to do more detail and more shading on the front panda and less on the pandas in the back. And by the way, in the stamp set, this little guy in the front is one stamp and the three together are another stamp. So if you don't like doing masking a whole lot, then this is a nice stamp set. A lot of the Art Impressions ones are because they'll have a couple images together. So you can do three pandas in one scene. I did mask out the little guy in the front in order to stamp the ones in the back, and I used some gray ink. All the supplies are, as always, listed in the doobly-doo. Used some gray ink so I could do some tone-on-tone -tone coloring and have those lines not appear as much, except for where I want them to appear, because I'm going to do a little bit of uh, additional detail work on this. What I'm doing here is creating a number of colors to make this yellow. I'm doing my undershades with purples. That V04 is really strong, and I softened that with a V12. And then I started going into my darker yellows, because if you've been following me or you've taken the Copic Jumpstart class, you'll know I like to do some of my shading sometimes with complements. And purple is the complement of yellow, so it makes a really great undercolor for the shadows. But right here, what you might be noticing is there's a really big transition from my mid-tone yellow, which is what I would call the Y17 since the purples are my darkest, but there's a really big gap there. So I'm gonna add another color. There's a whole lot of colors in this little panda. Another color to transition from the Y17 toward that Y02. If you struggle with blending, don't feel bad if you have to add three, four, five colors when you're trying to get a good blend. And if you end up with getting too much ink on the page when you start doing that, then just let colors dry a little bit beforehand and make sure you have a piece of paper underneath of whatever you're coloring. If you're doing it on a wooden table, like a really reflective type of surface, some of that color is gonna bounce underneath of the page when it starts bleeding through and then bounce back up into the paper and you're gonna get bleeding that you didn't expect because of that. So make sure there's something absorbent behind it. So I've got my, my yellows just about ready here, and I'm going to go in and do the white areas, because white always has some shadow in it. Sometimes you can do those in colors that are related to what you're coloring, so I could do a little bit of reflected yellow in him, but I wanted to just make his, his white areas white by using some grays. You can also use light blues for that, all different kinds of ways you can do it. If you're doing a naturalistic panda bear, you're going to do him in black and white, you might do warm grays or some sort of flesh tones almost for the white areas of him so that you don't have everything in complete black and white. You can create some contrast that way by using some warmer colors in the white shadows. I'm just going to use a couple different grays here to create some roundness on his belly and the roundness around his head. Now you'll notice since I stamped this in a really light color, the eyes have kind of sunk into those little spaces around, the little, little colored spaces around his eyes. His eyes have disappeared. So now I have to figure out how to go back in and add that detail back in. And that's one of the things you can do with this quote unquote no line coloring, which I kind of chuckle at because <laughs> we still have lines. But I'm going to use a tiny Copic marker. And you can use, if you're not going to do any extra coloring, on top of it, you can use any thin pens. If you've got Micron pens or something, just don't use Copic afterward. And I'm combining using a little bit of a black Copic multi-liner with then pencil. And pencil you can use to create some really fine details in things. 
realized I forgot his little tongue. But if you use pencil, don't go back in over the pencil with some a Copic marker because the Copic marker will bleed the pencil. But look at how much his face popped out now since his face is the only part that has those dark colors. There will be a few areas around the stamp that I can add more detail with the pencil. And you know, a graphite pencil is a great tool in your pocket. Make sure it's a really sharp one or I'm just using one of those little little clicker self whatever it is pencils, <laughs> mechanical pencils, that's the word for it escaped my mind for a moment but you can use a little pencil like that just make sure you have a, a nice sharp point on it and i can create a heavier line underneath of his chin because that's where shadows are and then let it slowly disappear into being just the ink line on the top of his head and that sort of thing i'm thinking in terms of the shadows i've already got and putting heavier lines under the shaded parts and either no line or lighter lines on the lighter parts and this allows me to have great control over my outlines. When you have a stamped line, it's all one weight regardless. It's just completely an outline. And if you just do no line coloring without any extra detailed pencil stuff, a lot of times Copic markers can feel really clunky if you love detail because their point only gets so far. It doesn't continue to, to give you fine detail. It, it, it's just thicker. That's just the way it is. But here where I want to have some super fine detail, I have the control of just using a little bit of graphite to do that. When I'm doing my shading underneath of here, probably should have done that before putting any pencil down there because I could very easily cause myself some trouble by touching the Copic marker to the pencil. So if you're trying to do that, then make sure that you get your coloring done first and do any of your pen and pencil work as one of your last things. Same with your white pencil or white pen or white pencil that you're using for added detail. Copic markers, it's alcohol ink and those things are not alcohol ink so they tend to bleed them and, and drag color all over the place, that sort of thing. Process on these guys is just to use a couple of the light grays on their white areas. And then I'm only doing solid colors for their arms and their legs. The less detail I put on them, then the more the little guy in the front is going to appear. And I can add a little tiny bit of details with the pencil, just like I did before. So they still have their faces and they still look kind of cute that way. But without putting a whole lot of detail around them the way I did around the panda in the front. And it just creates that little bit of contrast. I can go in and add just a little bit of those lines. Notice they're lighter lines than they are on the yellow panda. But I can add just a little bit in areas where I want a little sharp detail. And then I wanted to go back in on this front panda and darken up some of his shadows, create a little more contrast and a little more depth on him. And even go around and do a slightly stronger outline. It looks more like a sketch this way than it does like a stamp and just creates a different kind of a look. So there is today's cute little video. I just put a couple of layers of matching cardstocks. I have tons of different kind of cardstocks and just did a couple layers around it and added it onto a card base to make this happy little card, wishing somebody a fantastic day. And I will leave this video by wishing you a fantastic day. Go out there and make something beautiful and share it with somebody else because people love to see beautiful things that you've made and I would love to see them too. So tag me if you use this video idea, this tutorial idea for something that you create. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.